I like this football team. I like the personalities that we have. I like the character that we have on this team. I think guys can go out there and make plays. I'm excited about this team. Herbert still on his feet. He's got the mobility. Touchdown, Chargers. All right, so our first question. Defense! Uh, uh. Jack man, what it do? We follow, we ice out, make plays, have fun. And Go, talk, man. man. Yes, sir. Call out of three. One, two, three. Call out. You know that. Welcome to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. I'm your host, Haley Elwood. It's week nine, and the Bolts are back home this week, taking on their AFC West rival, the Las Vegas Raiders, at SoFi Stadium. But to start things off, Justin Herbert enters the month of November as the NFL's reigning offensive rookie of the month. He's been making history in his young career thus far. So here's Chris Harry and Daniel Jeremiah taking a look at tape of Herbert from last week and looking ahead to tomorrow's game in Film Room, powered by YouTube TV. From the Bronco 24, leading 14-3 on a second and 10. Herbert, shotgun snap, here comes the blitz. Throws to the end zone, right sideline. Has a man caught, Mike Williams, one-handed touchdown, Chargers. What a grab by Big Mike Williams. And what a throw from Herbert as well. Welcome to a week nine edition of Film Room, powered by YouTube TV. Here with Daniel Jeremiah. And DJ, last Sunday, a disappointing result for the Chargers. But Justin Herbert continues to impress, really impressive strides each and every week. Yeah, he's been impressive and does not look anything like a rookie, Chris. And I can show you some examples here of what he does that, that's kind of just continues to blow me away on a weekly basis. It didn't come in a win. I know Charger fans are disappointed about that, but man, the future is bright with Justin Herbert at quarterback. And I want to show you this first player, which is a touchdown pass to his roommate, Gabe Neighbors, uh, the fullback, down here in the red zone. Uh, this is going to be a play action. You're going to get Herbert on the move here, front side. And when you look right here, there's nothing. He doesn't really have anything. Everybody's covered up. You can circle them all up here. All four options have a Bronco defender uh, right in their path. So what do you do? You try and buy a little bit of time, which Herbert does extend it, extend it, extend it. And then at this point in time, this shows you the anticipation to be able to release the ball right here and see neighbors popping open and throw him to space. So you can see it kind of developing from the wide angle there, Chris. Yeah. Uh, but what's even better is when you can see it here from the end zone angle, I want to freeze it as he gets right about here. Watch his arm angle, watch him see this and drop his arm angle to get this right around the defender. A little sidearm action here with yeah. anticipation. That is a rare special throw to be able to deliver that ball accurately. The flag, of course, would be on the Broncos. You pick that up, but that's an impressive touchdown from one roommate to another. All right, DJ, what's next here on YouTube TV? All right, this next one here, I want to show you up at the top. We've got uh, Mike Williams on a vertical route. So he's on a go route. So as we know, you got off coverage. There's different ways you can throw a go. You can try and throw this over the top, right? You can, you can drop it in over the bucket, drop it over his shoulder, which he will do later in this game. I'll show you the next one. Or you can throw a back shoulder. And a lot of times it depends on what this center fielder is going to do. So you're going to see a too high look here at the start of the snap. You're going to see the safety at the top. He's going to rock down. He's coming down. And now the safety on the far hash, he's going to sprint to the middle of the field. But really, there's nothing holding him there. So he's locked in on Mike Williams. If you throw this ball over the top, that looks like a lot of ground. But, just, but Simmons is one of the best safeties in the NFL, one of the best high safeties. He's going to range over the top of this if it's thrown over the top, and I think he's going to pick the ball off. He's kind of baiting Herbert. Herbert sees it. He sees the depth of the corner, and this is a perfect example. Once you've got the back of the corner to be able to drop that back shoulder fade in, it keeps the ball not, a, not only away from the corner, but from that range player that from Simmons from the middle of the field to being able to get over the top to make a play on the football. And again, I go to spreading the ball around the week before Mike Williams, one catch for four yards this week. Uh, one of the biggest games of the year. Yeah, no doubt. And Mike Williams finding a way to make plays. I'm gonna give you one more example uh, with Mike Williams. Same thing, same concept, just got a vertical takeoff route. You've got a too high safety look as the Broncos like to do. They're going to change the look after the snap. Once again, you're going to see 45 Johnson, the blitzer linebacker. He's coming back, does a great job of picking him up. But as they rock the coverage this way, the last one, we saw the safety rolling towards Mike Williams. This time, that, that two-shell look safety, he's going back to the deep middle away. So he's got no chance to range over the top to make a play. Herbert sees it, reads it, and this time he drops it over the shoulder in the bucket for a touchdown. It's just, it's the same route, Chris, but it requires a different throw and shows you tremendous awareness here from Justin Herbert. Right, I want to look at this from this angle here. DJ, 
I, I guess there's a the difference between, all right, you have Mike Williams, you throw it up. It's like an 80, 20 ball instead of a 50, 50 <laughs> ball. And then it's, it's the plays that, that Herbert is, is manufacturing on his own. I guess there's a fine line between the two. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think you, you always, as a receiver, you want your quarterback to believe in you and have some faith in you. And obviously there's a play later on in this game where you have an interception in the end zone on a 50, 50 ball that that's going to happen on occasion, but I'll take my chances with Mike Williams more times than not to get, put the ball up there. Uh, let him go make a play. And DJ, now the Las Vegas Raiders come to SoFi Stadium and their pass rush has struggled this year with the exception of Max Crosby, who leads the team with four sacks. Yeah, this is a team that's it's playing well overall, but the one area that they've got to improve on is their overall pass rush. They do, as you said, though, have one key member in that department. That's Max Crosby. So if you're the Chargers, all of your attention has got to go to 98 on this one in this ball game because that's the guy you have to slow down. Let's watch him work here against Cam Newton and the New England Patriots. First of all, you're going to leave your, your tackle, your right tackle out here on an island with no help. It's going to be play action. And watch how quick he wins with his hands. See the tackle try and punch. He's going to swipe it away. Where have we seen that before, uh, Joey Bosa? That's yeah. a classic kind of patent Bosa swipe. And then watch his ability, once he gets to the top of his rush, to really flatten that circle and be able to finish there on Cam Newton. You can see the reach here. He's, they call him the condor because of how long he is. Just watch his arms as he gets close to Cam Newton. You can really get a, a feel for just how long he is uh, to be able to reach out, corral him and get him on the ground. He's outstanding with his hands. And I, I would think in obvious passing situations, Chris, um, you're going to want to do donate a little more attention his way. You don't want to leave him uh, out there one-on-one. -on -one. There's just no reason to, because you can hold up one-on-one -on -one everywhere else. DJ Herbert was sacked twice last week, hit four times. How would you assess the way he's played in the pocket and, and avoiding pressure and really thriving under pressure? Well, the numbers are outstanding. I mean, you know him. I mean, what he's done against the pressure and blitz looks, he's been tremendous. And it's knowing where your answers are, and it's also having the athleticism. When you do get a beat up front, you're going to happen. You're going to have guys get beat. Uh, can you make that free rusher miss? And Herbert's been able to not only make him miss, but to keep his eyes up and find some opportunities down the field. That's going to be key here in this Raiders game. Coming up, we find out more about Chargers rookie running back Joshua Kelly in the newest installment of Takeout, powered by BMW. What's good, money badge? <laughs> this segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Pacific Premier Bank. Welcome back to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. This season, Michael Badgley is getting to know our players a little bit better, and what better way to do that than over a meal? This week, he sits down with rookie running back Joshua Kelly to talk about Kelly's path to the league, playing in L.A., and what the NFL season has been like for him so far in this newest installment of Takeout, powered by SoCal BMW. Have you had, and I know it's only a couple weeks in, but have you had a welcome to the NFL moment oh, yet? what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's up, everybody? Got a brand new episode of Takeout, and today we're going to be doing it with my boy JK, Josh Kelly. Bolt up. A touchdown run by Joshua Kelly. Oh! This guy's story is insane, and I'm excited for you guys to hear it. Now, he picked the local restaurant, Tommy Pastrami, <laughs> uh, which is very Jersey, but we'll take Jersey any day of the week we can get it. Yo! JK! My man! What's good, money badge? <laughs> my guy, what's, what's good up? with you, bro? It's time to eat. It's time to eat. Time to chow down with my man badge. Tommy Pastrami. Ooh, look at this. It don't get much better than this. So, JK. Yes, sir. We've been through a lot of adversity. And one of the first things you had to go through was he started at UC Davis, mm -hmm. and then he had to walk on to UCLA. So kind of give us a rundown from that story, because it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, man. Out of high school, I was a two-star recruit. UC Davis was my only offer, man, so I took it. I was like, I got to go here. So I took it, bro. And I remember, I've always had this chip on my shoulder that I really believed that I could have played Power 5 Conference with the big squads, bro, oh, yeah. big teams, all that. I really believed I could do it. 
So I remember after my sophomore season when my coaches got fired, I really took that jump, bro. You said this is the opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. This is what I want to go for. It's like, man, I took a leap of faith, trusted God. Kelly, third touchdown of the half. Bro, that was some of the most difficult times of my life because it was like I left the scholarship. Yeah. And it was like, man, like I'm in my I'm in the unknown. And then UCLA wasn't really interested at first. So I was just playing cat and mouse, man, just calling them, calling them, calling them, calling them, like, look, give me a shot, give me yeah. a chance. And it took months, it took months, man. But um, Deshaun Foster, my guy. That's your guy. That's my guy, man. D Foss. You know your boy's here. <laughs> Los Angeles Chargers have made a selection. They get Joshua Kelly. The Chargers. <laughs> so you go fourth round. You know, like you just said, happiest day of your life. I don't even know how you can be smiling any bigger than you really are now, which is crazy. What did you have you had? And I know it's only a couple weeks in, but have you had a welcome to the NFL moment oh, yet? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So we were doing some summer workouts and um, I see Austin, it's crazy because I was actually driving right behind him to the like, to the field. Yeah. I was like, yo, I see this guy, light skin dude with bald hair. Yeah. I'm like, that has to be him. <laughs> He's driving to the same facility I'm going to. So I remember, I was like, should I hunk? Should I do whatever? I was like, nah, let me just play it cool. And then I remember he parks. And I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna park next to him. I'm gonna park all the way to the furthest <laughs> slot so he doesn't see me. <laughs> so he gets out. I'm just looking, I was like, dang, so like, this is him, man. I watched this dude in college, like I've been following him because yeah. I was a fan. I'm like, oh man, this is him. So I get out in the field and I see him, I come up to him, nervous. I'm like, hey man, what's good? And he's like, he's like hey man, what's up? I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> he's cool. And then we worked out together. He was just asking me about college, my life and everything. I was like, oh, this dude is super down to earth. So that did a lot for me, man. No doubt. So you say you worked out with him now, because when I see him in the weight room, the guy is a specimen. Yeah. What was your first reaction when you saw him in there? <laughs> man, if only you knew. <laughs> Bro, I remember, um, so I'm working out with him and I'm just seeing his ridiculous routine. Like, his warm-ups is crazy. I remember we are like dead pulling and dead lifting and his warm-up was so ridiculous, bro. Like, he has so much weight. I'm thinking like, okay, we're getting into the working sets. And he's like, oh no, that was just the warm-up. <laughs> and then I'm seeing him do pull-ups with one arm. Yeah. I'm just like, man, Eck is, it's a different he's animal. A different breed. You'll see him and be like, this dude can't lift that much. And, I'm, and he does. And I'm sitting there, you know, we work out during the season. Yeah. I'm like, hey, you know, how, what do you squat on like days after games? And he's just like, oh, well, I keep going up weight. And I'm like, well, you already got 405 on there. Yeah. How much can you really go up? <laughs> he just keeps adding it on. Well, let's take another bite here. Yeah. I'm starving. When we return, we find out about one of Joshua Kelly's off-field passions as takeout continues. If it's football, if it's not football, it's just watching films. It's just studying it and it's just like, breaking it down. This segment of Chargers HQ was powered by Toyota. Welcome back to Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. So as we've learned, Joshua Kelly is an LA native. And when we think of the city of Los Angeles, we think of it being the entertainment capital of the world. Well, Kelly does too, as he's an avid fan of the silver screen. Here's more from Badge and Kelly talking movies, screenplays, and superheroes in this next segment of Takeout, powered by SoCal BMW. So how cool is it? And I know growing up there wasn't an LA team. But how cool is it being from Inglewood <laughs> and playing your home games in Inglewood? It's just crazy for me. It's like, whoa, like I'm really from out here. We didn't have a team. Now the Chargers are out here. I get drafted to them and um, they're playing in Inglewood, man. And SoFi Stadium is the best stadium in the league and it's in Inglewood. It's crazy, man. And um, I'm not taking it for granted. No doubt. Every single time I'm out there, I'm like, wow, like this is special. This is special, man. But there's got to be times, you know, when you're driving to the stadium on game day, you're kind of looking around and you're like, yeah, man. this is really where I grew up. Exactly. And it's crazy because I'm like, wow, I'm seeing the same streets. And it was so cool seeing some of the fans outside the stadium going crazy. Like, yeah, man. I'm like, oh, this is special. No doubt. Now, being, being near Hollywood, I've always looked at that as a little bit of an extra element on top of that. Have you ever felt any type of, like, 
pressure when oh, you were man. at UCLA or yeah. you know in these big time cities? Oh, it's a the funny thing about playing out here, and I love it. I <laughs> absolutely love playing out here. Um, the fans and people out here expect greatness, and um, for me, man, I, I embrace it. I embrace it because as football players, we expect ourselves to be great too. Yeah. So. You know, the paying customer will too. So, you know, I love it, man. I'm only gonna embrace the challenge because, you know, LA fans are the best, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind and I kind of bring that up, you know, because Hollywood, yeah, film, big film. Are you kind are you kind of a film? Huge boy? film person. <laughs> huge, huge film guy. <laughs> I'm gonna be a screenwriter once it's all said and done one day, trust me. Huge. So you're you're truly passionate about mm -hmm. that. Huge. You should see what we do in our off days. That's all I'm doing, man. Really? If it's football, if it's not football, it's just watching films. It's just studying it and it's just like breaking it down. <laughs> what's your What's your go to? What's your favorite oh, film? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, man. And um, some people might laugh about that, but that's one of the best films I've ever seen, bro. I'm with it. it makes you feel every emotion. The acting is amazing. The plot is great. And then you know, obviously, you got your Interstellar's Inception. Man, there's just a bunch of films that I like watch over and over. I'm like, how did that happen? So dope, bro. So if you were, what would be your base idea if you were writing a screenplay? If you have, if you, you probably already wrote it. <laughs> but what, what, yeah. what kind of movie are you making? Are you gonna make it about yourself because you live a freaking movie? Or <laughs> what's your, what's your style? I'm so infatuated with superheroes. So like, I love it. Yeah. Like, Which one's your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Spider-Man? Yeah, Spider-Man, man, because I think Spider-Man is definitely a hero that everyone can relate to. Like, he wasn't the super, like, high-tech guy with all this technology. He was just a guy living in an apartment, going to school, going to college, just a regular person, creating his own stuff, had girl issues. Had, had girl <laughs> issues? Hey, man, not me, but some people out there can relate to that, but I can't. But Spider-Man was a guy who just, who just, <laughs> oh, man. Some, hey, I might have got myself in trouble. Nah, you're good. <laughs> One thing I got to know about Spider-Man, because I know my answer. Who's your favorite Spider-Man? Who played Who played the role? Who's your favorite? You got like uh, Tobey this Maguire. Is tough. You got Tobey Maguire. Yes. I think, was it Tom Holland? Yeah. I don't know the other guy's yeah, name. Yeah, man. It's crazy. So all three of them did something completely different. You know, Tobey Maguire, he's the OG. Those are the ones I grew up watching. And then Andrew Garfield, he was good too. You liked him? I think I thought he was pretty decent, man. I think the fans, they. I'll tell you, listen, I'll take your word for it, but I just wasn't yeah, a fan of him. I get you. I it think, was too much of a change I saw <laughs> from Tobey Maguire, what he looked yeah. like. I'm like, okay, that's Spider Man. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they're trying to tell me that this is Spider Man? No, I know. At least when you see Tom Holland, you're like, yeah, eh, that could be Tobey exactly. Maguire. Exactly. I think Tom Holland, to me, man, I think out of all of them, I think he was the best one. To be honest, Badge, you kind of remind me of him. Tom Holland. <laughs> Appreciate that. One of the best things about you, especially with everything that you've gone through, you know, being raised by a single parent and your older brother, is that you have this genuine, big smile oh, always you. on your face. Thank you. Appreciate now, that. Now, where, you, there's got to be something that that came from. Man, so first, it comes from God. I'm super passionate, man, I'm a huge Christian. I just, my mom always laid that foundation in me. And every day, bro, every day's a gift, man. No matter what's going on, every single day, bro. Like, it's gonna end soon. I realize, like, dang, one day I won't be able to play football. One day I'm gonna die. One day I won't be able to do anything. It's just like, every single day, man, whether it's good or bad, it's like, it's just a gift to be here. And it's a gift to meet people like you and it's just awesome, bro, to just be able to do what we're doing. And you can't help but smile at that, man, because some people are going through some things, but I'm having fun. I got good people in my life. I'm playing football. God is good. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody needs a little bit of Josh Kelly. Thanks, bro, hey, everybody needs some money back. <laughs> oh, Tommy's no, Pastrami, no, man. No. He hooked it up for free. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, we appreciate you coming on. I know you want to finish the rest of this sandwich. Man, I'm going to dig in. But hey, thanks for joining us on Takeout, brought to you by BMW. We'll see you guys soon. Nice. Thank you. Appreciate it, Badge. That'll do it for this week's Chargers HQ, powered by Toyota. We'll be back next week with more Bolts content to get you ready for week 10. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Haley Elwood. Good night.